Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're gonna be looking at what a primary and secondary system are in a heating and cooling circuits within a centralized HVAC system. Now, as you can see on the screen, we put up a, a basic schematic of the pipework for a typical centralized heating or cooling system in a commercial building. Now, this system has two circuits, which are known as the primary and the secondary circuits. So let's have a look at where they are and also what they do. So the first circuit we'll look at is known as the primary circuit. This contains the chillers or boilers, as well as the primary pumps. So this is known as the primary circuit. Now obviously these can be configured slightly differently. The pumps don't necessarily have to be directly feeding uh, the chiller or boilers. They can be into a header uh, and feeding either or. Um, but this is just a very typical uh, example just to, to help you understand and learn HVAC systems. So the other circuit we have in this system is known as the secondary circuit. Now this contains the secondary pumps as well as the risers which are these, these pipes that run uh, up the length of the building, the height of the building and this will also include uh, any of the heat transfer plant items such as the fan cool units or the air handling units um, you may even have uh, the chilled beams or underfloor heating or radiators, anything where, where the heat is transferred into the space or into the air uh, will be part of the secondary system. So all that combined uh, makes up the secondary circuit. So coming back to the primary circuit, the primary circuit is where the chilled water or the heated water is produced. And obviously that depends on if you've got a heating or cooling system obviously. Now these primary pumps, these are usually or typically constant volume, uh, but more modern systems, newer systems, uh, they may have variable speed drives on these pumps, um, but there is a minimum flow rate uh, that these variable speed pumps uh, must meet. And the reason they go down to variable speed um, is just for energy efficiency purposes. Now the reason the primary pumps are typically constant volume flow rate uh, or if they are variable speed, the reason they, they must meet a minimum flow rate is because uh, the chillers and boilers, uh, the manufacturers will set a minimum flow rate that these chillers must have in order for them to work. If the minimum flow rate drops below this, uh, then the chillers and the boilers, they're, they're just gonna burst. So all the heat transfer tubes that are happening inside there, um, they're all gonna burst. And that will obviously break the machine and take the whole system, uh, whole heating or cooling system out of uh, action. So obviously you don't want that to happen um, unless maybe you're trying to sabotage the building or something, but um, otherwise uh, you don't want that to occur. So the primary circuit, the chilled water uh, will flow from the primary pumps around through the chiller or boiler um, and around uh, just in this constant loop passing between uh, the chiller or boiler and the pump and passing um, uh, past the secondary circuits as well, uh, continually flowing around as so. Now the secondary system, this is where the chilled water or the heated water is distributed around the building to provide the air conditioning and space heating or cooling. The secondary system pumps uh, can also be constant volume or variable uh, volume. More modern and newer systems uh, will almost certainly have a variable um, speed drive on, on these pumps and that's for energy efficiency reasons again obviously. Now there's usually a pump on the secondary circuit and that's because um, th this circuit runs off all around the building providing that uh, air conditioning, uh, the water for air conditioning and, and heating. Um, so there's, there's lots of uh, pipe fittings and valves etc and all of these at a pressure drop. Uh, to that which is a resistance to the flow of water. So you need a pump just to push that water around the entire circuit and make sure that the system is meeting the design criteria that it was set to do. Now in this schematic here uh, you can see I've only drawn one secondary circuit but there can be there can be multiple circuits coming off this feeding different parts so you may have um, a secondary circuit feeding all the fan core units, you may have a secondary system also feeding uh, all the AHUs or it may be feeding the west part of the building and another secondary circuit feeding uh, the east part of the building. 
And these are always known, it doesn't matter how many secondary circuits you've got, uh, they are always known as secondary circuits, and they will probably have an individual name such as uh, West Wing, Fan Core Units, Secondary Circuit, something like this. Occasionally you might also find a secondary circuit uh, which has, has a very short run, so there isn't much of a pressure drop across there, um, and so that probably won't have a pump, that will just take the, the flow uh, which is coming off of the primary circuit. Now in between these two circuits, the primary and secondary, we've got a section of pipe which is known as the common header. And it's otherwise, it's got a few names, it's otherwise known as the low loss header and also a decoupler. So the water in this section can flow either way. So depending on the demand of the building and the secondary circuits, um, it can flow uh, through into the secondary circuit. So let's say for example, all these fan cool units here are all cooling for 100% cooling uh, and that means that all this chilled water straight from the chillers or boilers um, is going to flow up and pass into uh, the fan cool units and then down and back around into the primary circuit where it will go to get rid of its heat and, and cool down again and repeat the circuit. And in that instance there will be no flow in this section here. All the water, the water will be stagnant in here and all the water will be flowing around into this. Now that's only when the building is running at 100% of its design capacity, which is probably 1% of the entire year that it operates. So the, the other 99% of the time, the chiller or the, the heating or cooling system will be uh, operating at part load. And what that means is that uh, all the, the fan cool units or AHUs, etc., um, are cooling for much less, so you may have one cooling here for 10% cooling, one here for 30% cooling, etc, uh, etc. Et so that means that not all of the water which is passing in this circuit will flow into this. So uh, some of it will, so let's say, let's say for example all of these fan cool units are cooling for 50% uh, cooling capacity. That means that 50% of the water in this circuit will enter into this and head off into the fan cool units um, and come back round into the primary, whereas the rest of the water is going to bypass that and flow straight back around the primary circuit, and that's just going to mix the temperature of this warm water which is coming back after it's picked up the heat from the space, if it's a chilled system, um, and that's going to mix with this chilled water that's come back from the chillers. But we'll have a look at the, uh, the low loss header or the common header decoupler in a separate video in much more detail. So we'll just show you an example of a schematic here from a real a real world example. Um, so here we've got obviously uh, two boilers uh, which are running and then we've got the primary pump set. So in this case the water is being pulled through the boilers rather than pushed through. And that heads off and goes into this. This is the, the decoupler or the low loss header. And uh, that heated water can then either flow through this, through the header and back around into the boilers or it can go off into these which are making up the uh, there's a secondary circuit here with the flow there and the return coming back on this one and then back down or there's a, a second secondary circuit which is flowing through this one here and that will return through this section here so depending on the the demand on these that water will then uh, flow either around here or through these circuits or maybe a mix of both so some will flow through here and some of that water will continue around in that primary circuit. And what that looks like in the real world, so we've got the primary circuit running around here, so with the boilers that just off of uh, the photo here, and that's a continuous circuit running around there. Meanwhile, we've got the, the low loss header, which is located here, and coming off of that, we've got these uh, different circuits here, so there's one secondary circuit, and then there's another secondary circuit going there, and then this is the return uh, pipe work flowing back round into the low loss header and off uh, to the boilers. Okay that's it for this video thank you very much for watching I hope you have enjoyed this and it's helped you uh, understand how the systems work if you've got any questions please leave them in the comments section below and don't forget to like subscribe and share the video uh, thank you very much for watching